high teens, central and eastern parts of Newfoundland. We'll break down your full forecast in detail. We'll have a look at uh, Friday and the weekend tonight on Here and Now at 6. That's 5.30 in most of Labrador. All right, here we come. I'm Ramona Deering in St. John's, and this is Crosstalk Broadcasting from the Easter Seals Building in St. John's. Our special guest on the show is Paralympian gold medalist Katarina Roxon. Everyone is invited to come on down and meet her. We are at 206 Mount Sio Road in the Easter Seals Building. Come over if you're in the area or call in as usual and put any questions you might have to Katarina Roxon. 722-7111 or 1-800-563-8255. And we are also broadcasting live on Facebook on the CBC Newfoundland and Labrador Facebook page if you would like to see everyone's faces. And you can also send in questions for Katerina on the CBC Newfoundland and Labrador Facebook page. And I just want to say, before we say hello to Katarina Roxon, hello to all of the Easter Seals program participants who have gathered here. Thank you so much for coming today. Is anyone looking forward to seeing Katarina Roxon? You know, she was only 15 years old when she competed at her first Paralympic Games in Beijing in 2008. She's also competed in the London Paralympics. She was beyond impressive at the Toronto Para Pan Am Games last year, winning six medals, including a gold, and now a gold medal at the Rio Paralympics in the 100-meter breaststroke. Yesterday, Premier Dwight Ball announced that Route 490 near her home of Kippens has been renamed Roxon Way. Please say hello to Katarina Roxon, everyone. Hello to you, Katarina Roxon. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. You can go ahead and grab a seat because I think a lot of people here want to talk to you, Katarina Roxon. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you very much. You see all these people here who want to say hi to you? Yeah. <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> all right. I'm going to take it straight to the floor for some questions. So. You would like to start off. What's your name, please? My name is Steven. H how does it feel to be have your first gold medal in the Paralympics? Any other questions that you want to follow up with there? No. How much does it mean to you that she won this medal? It, it gives me, it gives me, um, props that knowing that I, if she could do it, I could do it. Do you do any sports? Bocce. Oh, you've got to explain bocce because it's a big thing around here. It's a di difference between lawn bowling and curling. And I, is it okay if I tell everyone that you use a wheelchair to get around? Yep, that's all right. But this is a game that everyone can play. Yes. Whether they're in a wheelchair or not, right? Yes. Do you think it should be a Paralympic sport? Yes, I think it should be. Great. It is a Paralympic sport? It oh, thank you for that correction. So you, you should try to get on the team. <laughs> Great talking to you. Thank you. All right. And I want to introduce people to Dan Primer, who does the statistics for the ice caps. And he has a question for Katarina Roxon. Dan, what is your question for her? I should let people know that Dan uses special technology to speak for him. So you can go ahead, Dan, and ask Katarina Roxon that fantastic question that you thought of. Katarina, how much training did you have to do in order to make the Paralympics? I had to do, it's about seven hours of training every day. Um, 
it's cut between dry land training, running, and swimming as well. Swimming takes the most. It's about three to four hours every day, uh, six days a week. Um, so it's uh, a lot of training for the last 10 years. <laughs> Dan, thank you for that question. Really appreciate that. All right, I'm going to say hello to my colleague, Arianna Kellant, because she is gathering some of the questions that are coming in on the Facebook page for CBC Newfoundland and Labrador. Hello, Arianna. Hello. Fire away. Yes, okay, so this question is from Christopher Ivany. This comes from our Facebook page. He wants to know what was going through your mind when you stepped onto the podium to get your medal. <laughs> Actually, um... I was thinking about my family, uh, my mom, my dad, my sister especially. Um, they've always been there supporting me, and this was this medal wasn't just for me; it was for them as well. But it's it's not just the four of us. It's um, my teammate or my training partner Jackie Nippard, my aunt and my physiotherapist Peggy Earl, my swim team back home who I train with, who knows the training I've been through, um, Swimming Newfoundland who's been following me since I was like nine years old. Um, it was it's a huge it's a huge group of people. All those people ha went through my mind um, from the time I touched the wall till the time I was got my medal and was walking off the podium. Those are it was just people I was thinking of because these are the people that should, be, should have been on the podium with me, but with, with me in spirit. Now, I have a question for you, Katerina, about something incredible that happened on the podium. Uh, you had some real serious competition during this race, right? It was not a cakewalk. You were <laughs> actually a second behind at first, right? So yeah. you, you get up on the podium, you're there with Great Britain's Claire Cashmore, a formidable foe, and you're also on the podium with Ireland's Ellen Kane, who won bronze. And the three of you all did something. What was that? <laughs> um, we stuck our nubs in the air, kind of like in salute, but it was, it was something fun to do, and um, we all, th all three of us have the same arm missing, um, the same way we all got it, we were born with it, and it was, it was something fun to do, but it's, it symbolizes a lot more than just having a bit of fun. It was it's kind of uh, kind of showing the world that any anything is possible, um, no matter who you are, no matter what life throws your way, um, anything is possible, and um, that we were comfortable in our in our own skin and being there. And it was it was just a true blessing for sure. Was there ever a time as an athlete that you would not have? done that gesture, nubs up, that celebratory <laughs> gesture? Um, definitely when I was growing up, I was very self-conscious of my arm. Um, if I didn't have my prosthetic arm, I would always cover my arm up so people didn't see. Um, but growing up, I've, I've, after graduating high school, I've come to be very confident in my body and I can't change, I can't change it at all. So the only thing I can do is embrace it and just be who I am. So. Um, for sure, growing up, I was like that, but now I'm just, I'm very, very confident in my own skin. <laughs> and that nub is not covered up for those people who are listening on the radio. So what do people here at the Easter Seals building think of that, the fact that it is not covered up? Anyone like that? All right, let me say hello to another Paralympian. Joanne McDonald, thank you so much for coming today, Joanne. Oh, it's wonderful to be here and to see uh, Katerina. And a huge congratulations on your win. That's simply awesome. Thank you very yeah. much. Now, the thing is, some people may not know that you are a Paralympian. Do you think that Paralympians get more respect today than you did? I think they don't know because I'm really old. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your time in the Paralympics. Uh, I competed in actually three Paralympians, and uh, it was a very long time ago. Uh, but let's go back to Katerina for a moment, and uh, I'd also like to do a shout out to Liam Hickey and Robin Andrews, who also uh, competed at the Paralympics, and while didn't come home with a medal, I know that they represented Canada and Newfoundland and Labrador exceptionally well, but uh, Katerina, certainly your gold medal is simply just awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And do you have a question for her? Um, I guess the, the thing I wondered about was when you were swimming, uh, I think there were an incredible number of people watching 
uh, it seemed like there were a large crowd. And that must have uh, been uh, an interesting experience because I think for most of us who've competed at the Paralympics, uh, at least in my generation, we didn't really have the opportunity to have a lot of spectators, if you will. So watching you swim and looking at the spectators were there, it looked like it was absolutely full. So I'd be interested in terms of your perspective and how that felt. Um, actually, I was very surprised. Um, we walked in on day one. I wasn't swimming that day, but I walked in on day one um, of the morning, so heats, and I saw the crowd. I was just amazed. I've never seen a crowd, so, like so much crowd there for a first, first day, first heat. I was very, I was just in shock. Our entire Team Canada was in shock, even our, our coaching staff. Um, and we were like, oh my goodness, the, it's just going to get bigger for finals. Everybody comes to finals. And, but it just grew and grew and grew. And it was just, it was amazing. The crowd in Brazil is amazing. They are, they're an amazing country for sure. I, I couldn't believe it for like, even if there wasn't a Brazilian in, in the race, whoever came first, the crowd went crazy for it. If you broke a record, the crowd went crazy for it. Even if you came last, the crowd went crazy. The amount of support the Brazilians gave was just phenomenal. I was, I was, I'm in shock still today. It's, it was incredible. That's fabulous. I guess when I look back in terms of my competition years, um, it was sometimes a hard sell for people to recognize that people with disabilities, that maybe used a chair or had low vision, the possibility that they could be uh, very competitive to be competing at a at Paralympics was just well that's nice mm -hmm. but I, I I remember looking at and listening to one of the commentators did an analogy of the three men uh, competing in a 1500 meter with vision impairments mm -hmm. they basically if they had been competing in the Olympics they would have won gold silver and bronze yeah I mean that to me is just phenomenal I think it really s speaks volumes in terms of where we have come. So oh, for yeah. sure, a hundred percent. It's it shows that even though we are disabled, we can still compete with the guys that are able-bodied. Like living here in Newfoundland, um, I compete only with the able-bodied swimmers. I just I, there's no other opportunities for me to s compete with people who are paras. So for me to have that, it's great. But to see that on the on the Paralympic stage, that these guys, if they were in, if they got to go to the Olympics they would have beaten the Olympians. That, I was very, I was, I, I was just in shock with that. That was amazing. Our entire team saw that article and we were just like, wow, that is amazing. Parasport is doing phenomenal. This is a special broadcast of CBC Crosstalk. We are at the Easter Seals bu building in St. John's. Everyone is welcome to drop on by if you're in the area. We are at 206 Mount Sile Road and we are celebrating Katarina Roxon's Paralympic gold medal. It is fantastic to be here. We have a lot of people assembled here. And Katerina, you were just talking about that other kind of athlete, the able-bodied athletes. Well, we just happen to have a gold medal Olympian in our gymnasium right now. Say hello to Mark Nichols. Hey. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Very good, but I suspect it's someone else that you'd like to say hello to rather than me. How's it going, Katerina? <laughs> good, how are you? You must be busy these days. <laughs> Very busy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, welcome home, and uh, what a great turnout here today. Uh, it's uh, a lot of fun to see everything that you're going through and uh, brings back lots of uh, great memories. Yeah, for sure. I'm going through the same things you, w you went through. <laughs> yeah. So she was just saying that a lot of Paralympian athletes would just skunk anybody going, including non-Paralympian <laughs> Olympic athletes. Agree or disagree? I probably tend to agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, think, uh, I don't think I'd stand a chance in the pool against Katerina. <laughs> so do you have a question for her? Yeah. Um, if you had to spend one day with any Olympic gold medalist from Newfoundland, mm -hmm. who would it be? <laughs> Wow. Think and answer carefully. Mm, that's a tough one. I definitely have to go with you for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, um, I know you've probably gotten this question a lot uh, over the past few days, but outside of winning the gold medal, mm -hmm. what's your favorite moment from the uh, Olympic experience? My favorite moment? Ooh. 
Oh my goodness, that's a very hard question. Everything was just phenomenal. Um, I think it would have been probably watching my one of my closest friends and two of them actually um, stand on the podium. One of them, I was cheering for so hard, she was going for the world record and she ended up breaking the world record. So I was so, so thrilled. She's like a sister to me. So it was, I was very emotional for that. And another was one of the rookies on our team. Um, she was very nervous, very scared for her race. And she was talking to me the day before and the day of and trying to get some advice, like what she should do, how she should calm down. So she was talking to me about that and she ended up winning silver medal and we were just so happy. I was jumping for joy for her. It was, it was phenomenal. That's probably my next favorite moment for sure. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us about yours, your favorite moment. Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, mine, it's uh, probably walking in in the opening ceremonies with the rest of Team Canada. Uh, you know, spending years and years in Katarina, as it talked about the number of hours she spent training and working towards this moment. Um, when you finally realize that you've accomplished uh, that moment, she's been to three Paralympic Games. Like, that's, um, that's unbelievable <laughs> to me. I've only been to one. At, and she, how old are you now? 23. 23. <laughs> three Paralympic Games. It's unbelievable. And uh, I, just, I just think that moment when you get to walk in with all the Team Canada and, you know, you're standing behind your flag and realizing that all the work, hard work you've put in uh, has finally come, come true, it's, uh, it's quite the moment. How much pressure, Mark, do you feel to be a role model to young people in Newfoundland and Labrador? Because I think Katerina is just probably starting to feel that <laughs> herself. Um, you know what? I, I don't really feel pressure per se. Um, I just kind of go out and just be myself and enjoy what I do and, um, you know, try not to say anything <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but and, you know, it just, just be yourself and... Uh, I think people appreciate that when you're yourself and you go out and you work hard and, um, you know, you're humble about your accomplishments, but you're proud of it as well. And, we're, you know, Katerina said it n numerous times. She's proud of where she's from. She's proud of what she's done. Um, and, you know, you, you go out and you, you take questions from people. You answer as honestly as possible. And uh, just be yourself and enjoy everything that comes with it. So, Katerina, how much pressure are you starting to feel to be a role model? You know what? It's like, like you said, it's not really pressure. You just go out, be yourself, and everything kind of just flows naturally. So, it's no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been absolutely inundated with requests like this one today to be on our show? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is very exciting, actually. I was very excited for this. She won't be able to go to the super supermarket, right, Mark? <laughs> no, it'll be tough for a while. You know, lots of lots of autographs. Um, my wife's standing in the back of the room, and sh she tells the story about the first time we went grocery shopping after we went to the Olympics, and uh, she left me in the corner of the produce section and uh, <laughs> went and did the gro grocery shopping and came back, and I was still in the exact same spot signing some autographs. And uh, that's the you know some of the fun stories that you get to tell over and over and over again. And uh, Katerina is going to have so many more stories than, than we have, and, um, you know, she's, she's really going to enjoy all this. Let's hear it for the two gold medal Olympians that we're just hearing from right here. Mark Nichols, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Thank you. This is a special broadcast of CBC Crosstalk. The number is to call in if you've got a question for Katerina Roxon, 722-7111 or one 800 563-8255, that's 722-7111, or 1-800-563-8255. Now, I'm hoping that I can soon speak to uh, Eileen Bartlett, so if she can step forward. Ah, there she is, found you. Come on up here, Eileen, I'll put you on the spot. So, in a great way. Uh, we owe a huge thank you to Eileen for helping us with this show and so many other people here at Easter Seals. You're the director of programs here at Easter Seals Newfoundland, and you guys do a whole bunch to encourage people who have disabilities to get involved in all kinds of sports. Tell us a bit about that, Eileen. 
Well, here at Easter Seals, uh, we, our mandate is um, to provide life-changing experiences for people with disabilities of all ages and all abilities. And in that process, we offer programs such as physical activity, including bocce ball, which is a Paralympic sport, uh, wheelchair basketball. Liam Hickey is coming back tonight. Um, he started here at Easter Seals. Um, from, from Rio, he's returning. An amazing experience for him there. Um, we also have um, swimming. Uh, a recreational swim program. We have uh, a music therapy program, uh, uh, fundamental movement skills, let's get active, and a whole group of uh, programs that uh, encourages people with disabilities to get involved in the community, uh, family-based, individual-based, and um, to, to develop their skills. And you've got something here to show us. We are broadcasting as well as on CBC Radio, also on the Facebook page for CBC Newfoundland and Labrador. We're broadcasting live. So tell us about this chair that we are looking at right now, Eileen. Well, we're here in Easter Seals Gym, and this is the place where we deliver many of our programs. One is wheelchair basketball. So we have a, a wheelchair basketball chair. Um, it's a little, it's different from a uh, street chair, an everyday chair the person with disability would use. Um, it has, um, it can cambered wheels, it can spin on a dime very quickly and easily. Um, it has anti tip, uh, dual anti tip on the back for safety. And um, th this um, sport is um, played by people with and without disabilities. It's an integrated sport. So it's a, a very community based program where um, people of all abilities can play together. All right, great to meet you. And again, thank you so much for your help with today's show. Really appreciate it. No problem, thank you. Eileen Bartlett, the Director of Programs with Easter Seals, Newfoundland. All right, who am I going to talk to next? I think you might have a question for Katerina Roxon. Your name is? Cease Witten. Hi, Cease. What's your question for Katerina? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations, Katerina. Thank you. And I'd like to tell you that I'm old enough to be your grandfather, <laughs> but you're still an inspiration to me. You will be an inspiration to my granddaughters. I am thrilled to be in the presence of two great Olympians, three great Olympians, but two great women of Newfoundland and Labrador, two strong independent women, and you uh, show exactly what independence and women's liberation are all about. And I'd like to thank you for the effort you put in and let you know that it goes right down in the history of this province. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. That was, that was very kind of you. I appreciate that. Um, we are very, I can, hopefully I can say this on behalf of both of us. Um, I don't try to be an inspiration, but um, I'm glad that I can be and hopefully inspire different, a lot of different people in sport. Now you were so emotional, I believe, as you said that. Tell me why. Because I come from a generation where People of different abilities were looked at differently. I know exactly what uh, the disabled population of this province went through to get where we are today. There are a lot of people that went before, and I'm glad to see that there's a new generation coming up to inspire not only young people, but old people as well. Very well put. Thank you so much for that. All right, I want to say hello now to someone who's been spending a lot of time over the past couple of days with Katerina Roxon. She is Karina Hartley. She's the Executive Director of Swimming Newfoundland and Labrador. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. That's what journalists do. Tell us one thing about Katerina we might not otherwise know. <laughs> oh, I have to be really careful. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. 
no, 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 no one's listening in the audience, right guys? <laughs> okay, one thing that I know about Katerina that nobody in this room probably knows is that the first thing she wanted to eat yesterday, <laughs> and it didn't, it didn't actually happen, no. was poutine. <laughs> You wouldn't let her have poutine. She wanted gold medal. I, well, I tried. <laughs> we tried, but we just we were so busy it didn't happen. But I think Stephenville. I think she would like some jigs dinner when she gets oh, home. Oh yeah. In case anyone would, is wondering. A hundred percent jigs dinner. <laughs> How much are you looking forward to getting home, seeing um, your parents, your dad Leonard, also your coach? <laughs> um, I'm very excited. I haven't seen them in almost two months now, and. Uh, um, I know my mom's gonna cry. She's just that's just the person who she is. Um, but um, I th I've been talking to them every now and then. Um, after I won my medal, um, I talked to them that night, and then I didn't talk to them for like three days. I know it would it, everything was just crazy, so um, I never got to talk to them for three days. But then I've been talking to them today and yesterday, so. Um, I'm, I'm excited to go home and see them. Um, I'm hoping they are a little bit too, so. <laughs> maybe. Just a little yeah, bit. <laughs> maybe. So Karina, what does her gold medal mean for the future of swimming for athletes right across Newfoundland and Labrador when it comes to the sport that you love mm -hmm. just as much as Katerina? I, it's hard to put words to it. Um, all athletes, swimmers, no matter what sport, para-athletes, of course, when you're a kid and you're trying hard in your sport, what you dream of is going to the Olympics, is going to the Paralympics. This girl has been in our swimming family since she was a, a little girl. <laughs> and so we're so lucky in our swimming community that we all know each other, we get to know each other, we care about each other, we get to follow each other's accomplishments and, and whatnot. And so for Katerina to achieve what all of us otherwise have just dreamed of is huge for swimmers, for athletes in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, if you dream big, you can do Anything. huge things. And we're so proud, as mm -hmm. you can imagine. And, uh, and we look forward to seeing other medals from Newfoundland mm -hmm. in the Paralympics and the Olympics in the future. Great talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Karina Hartley, the executive director of Swimming Newfoundland and a Labrador. So I'm wondering if anyone in the room here is inspired to start swimming because of what Katerina Roxon has done. Any show of hands? <laughs> or is anyone already swimming? You've got some work to do, I Katerina. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see many hands there. <laughs> um, the number is to call in 722-7111 or 1-800- 563-8255 if you have any questions for Katarina Roxon. And just before I go back into the audience here at the Easter Sales building in St. John's, I want to mention the fact that, Katarina, you were just talking about how much you want to see your folks back in Kippens. You're a bit of a star in India, uh, not <laughs> just Canada. I saw yeah. a lovely write-up featuring your grandparents yeah. and other members of your family who happen to live in India. When is the last time that you spoke to your grandmother? Um, actually, it was the day before I was catching a flight for our last camp in Canada. And uh, so that my gr both my sets of grandparents, they they called me, they talked to me, they wished me luck, they prayed for me. So that's the last time I got to speak to them, really. So I, when I get back, they're probably going to be one of the first people I talk to on the phone. So I'm really excited to to hear them and uh, hopefully I can see them over Skype or something, so. How much of an influence have they been for you? Have they been a big support? They've been a huge, huge support for me ever since, ever since I was born actually. Um, I read the article um, that was in the Indian newspaper and uh, uh, it brought me to tears. My grandmother said, um, when I was born, my dad called my grandmother up and let her know that I was born, but I was born missing my arm. And my grandmother said that, um, um, don't worry about it. God is going to bless her in her life and do great things. And uh, that just brought me to tears. Um, so ever since, ever since I was born, um, they've been very supportive of me, even though like I've been in swimming and doing other things in life here in Canada, and I haven't been able to see them a whole lot. Um, they've always been very, very supportive of me. 
All right, let me see if anyone else in the audience has a question for Katerina Roxon. I will get to you in just a moment, but I will get to this other gentleman first. Just going to the back of the gym here. Hello, what's your name? Colin Jarvis. Thanks so much for coming today. You're welcome. So your question for Katerina Roxon, and I'll get you to belt it out a bit to make sure that she can hear it way up there at the front. How fast did you have to go to the swim? Um, I had to go uh, a minute, 19 seconds for to win this gold medal, actually. Um, it was, I've never been able to break a minute 21 um, that I swam last year at World Championships. So for me to drop two seconds, I was very, very, very happy. Um, <laughs> Um, I, my going into any kind of meet, you aim, you have goals, you write down, and I did write my goal as a minute 19 seconds. Um, obviously I was, I was aiming high, you know, you gotta aim high, but, um, when realistically thinking, I thought I would maybe get down to a 120, um, and to look on the clock and see that I went a minute 19, I was, I was over the moon, over the moon. <laughs> Not only that, Great Britain's Claire Cashmore was ahead of you by a second for the first half <laughs> yeah. of the race. Could you actually see that she was ahead of you? No, I could not actually. I, I didn't see anybody. The, la the only person I saw, I had a glimpse of Ellen Keane as I was coming off the turn. And she won bronze? Yeah, she won bronze. She did amazing. Um, she's the, I saw a little bit of her just because she wore this super super bright green swimsuit so that's that's literally the only reason I saw her um, otherwise I kind of kept my head down tried to focus on what I needed to do think about the process of everything uh, I know in the past I've I've rushed my stroke a lot and for breaststroke breaststroke is a very technical stroke and if you your technique is not on point you even you, and you try to rush the stroke you will lose time so I tried to really focus on my stroke and just be calm and not, not get ahead of myself. So um, she was the only person I saw coming off the wall and then everything else was pretty much a blur to me. <laughs> and then the tears started when yeah. you touched that wall and you knew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite a moment indeed. All right, let me get another question from the floor. Hello, your name is? It's Trevor Hickey. And Trevor, you work here at Easter Seals, right? Yes, I do. Your question for Katerina. I just uh, wanted you to go through some of the neat, inclusive features of your medal for the, for the audience. Oh, yeah, for sure. So the medal, it says Rio 2016. Okay, I'm not going to say this right, but it says Jogos Paralimpicos. Um, it's Portuguese. And it has the Paralympic symbol. It has the 2016 Rio heart symbol onto it and then it has um, it's kind of like a leaf design going up the side of it which is very nice on the back of it it has the Paralympic symbol again but bigger um, again it has like the leafy leafy design onto uh, one corner of it it says Rio 2016 Paralympic Games and then underneath it it has it written in Braille um, and then on the bottom, on the edges of the medal, it actually describes, or it says the event that it was in. So it says swimming, women's 100 meter breaststroke SB8, which is my classification. And also a very, very cool part of this medal um, for visually impaired athletes. Um, if you shake it, you can hear um, a sound. It's actually um, little tiny balls inside the, each medal, um, the gold, silver, and bronze. They have, um, the gold has 28 balls, the silver has 20, and the bronze has 16 little balls, so they all make a different sound. Um, it's for visually impaired athletes to know what kind of, what kind of metal they're receiving. So it's pretty cool. I thought that was very, such, a, like, such an amazing idea. Um, something different, um, something to make it very unique, so. And have you stuck that thing in your teeth yet? Oh, I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> like you see yet. all the athletes doing. <laughs> I was at a school this morning, though, and a little boy did for me. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't mind that, Katerina? Pardon? You didn't mind that? No, that's fine. He was he was very very adorable. 
<laughs> very adorable, so. <laughs> As I've been mentioning, we are broadcasting on the Facebook page for CBC Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as on CBC Radio, and people are welcome to phone in. We always have people calling in on the Crosstalk phone in, so feel free to do so, 722-7111 or 1-800-563-8255 if you would like to say hello to Katerina Roxon or ask her a question. And Arianna Kellen is back because we've got another question that's come through on social media. Yeah, and this is a really good question. This is again from Christopher Ivany. He asks, was there ever a time when you felt like giving up? If so, what made you continue on this journey? Ooh, that that's a, a great very, question. That's a very good question. Actually, you know what? Um, I think every athlete has a moment or a few moments in their in their careers where they feel like they're giving up. If something's not going right for a while, if they're having a really rough day, a really rough practice, or just like a rough year, um, you do have moments where you feel like giving up, and um, it's hard, but. Um, I, I've talked to my parents. I know I've been through this a few times. Um, and I just talked to my parents, I talked to my sister, my teammates, and just, um, I got some reassurance from them and told them like, it's okay, you know what? You have, you're going through a rough patch right now. Just go through it and you'll get, get out on the other side and you'll do amazing. Um, it's, it's a really, it's a hard mental game for sure for every athlete. It doesn't matter what sport you're in. It's a, it's a rough mental game. Um, definitely um, something that I think every athlete should work on for sure myself included a hundred percent it's it's rough but what's the roughest thing it's well especially if you're going through a very rough patch where nothing's going right you're training you're doing everything you need to do and the results are just aren't there it's you lose a lot of confidence in yourself and what you're doing and you're thinking maybe something's not working, you change it, still not working. So it, it's a real mind game that plays with you right there. And uh, I think it's you definitely need to talk to people for sure because I, that's what I did and I, it felt, it felt, I felt a lot better, a lot more confident in myself and just getting over or getting through that rough patch is is great when you have people supporting you for sure well thank you so much for sharing that really appreciate that all right another question from the audience here from the easter seals building in st john's hello your name please Haley redmond and your question for katarina roxon i'm a bocce ball athlete and we've been going to nationals for this will be our fifth year now um and who would your biggest influence in getting you to the paralympics my biggest influence, wow. Hmm. I have a lot of influences, actually. Um, definitely my role model for me and person that I looked up to when I started swimming was Stephanie Dixon. Um, she has won so many medals in Canada, I cannot even count them all. She's been to, uh, I wanna say, four, four games. And she was in my classification, so I raced against her. She definitely beat me, like, a lot of times. But um, she's such a positive person um, on everything in life. Um, doesn't matter who she's talking to. If it's her competitor, if it's her teammates, if it's her coach, she's always very positive. She has some, something nice to say. Um, and even when she's training, if something's not going well, she takes and looks at the brighter side of things. And it's very motivating. Um, I remember... The first time I talked to her, I was very, very nervous to talk to her because I was, I was a little 12-year-old kid and she was this adult woman who won so many medals and is a role model to so many people. And I was getting in the pool with her and I asked her if I could get in the lane next to her, if that was okay to swim with her. And she said, yeah, you do what you need to do. Don't, don't, don't even need to ask me. Do what you need to do. And uh, I know after that, I felt a lot more confident talking to her and she, she definitely was someone I was able to talk to going through the, the stages of my first, my first team. Being on my team, I was very scared, so she was someone I looked up to that I could talk to and bring any questions I had to, which was very nice for me. Um, yeah, so Steph Dixon, and still to today, she's definitely someone I look up to. I was very, very happy when um, I won my medal in Brazil this summer, 
that she was actually there. She was watching my race, and she was the first person I talked to after I came out of the pool, and she was just in tears. She's known me since I was 12 years old, so um, to see, it was nice to have her there, and because she's been my role model, it was just an amazing, amazing time. That's amazing, thank you. Thank Who's you. your role model? Uh, in Bacha, I would say it's Marco. Marco Desfalcio, he's pretty oh. cool. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. He's been to how many games, Marco? A lot. <laughs> so people keep talking about bocce ball, and, and we explained it briefly at the beginning of the show, but for anyone who's just tuned in, how would you describe the game? It's a cross between lawn bowling and curling. It's the most inclusive game I've ever seen in my life. It means that anybody of any disability can play sport. Of course, there's classification systems, but even if you can't compete in those games, you can still be influenced by the people that are and train with them and play alongside of them, and I just love it. And I'm guessing you're pretty deadly good, too. I'm a BC2. I'm, I'm currently ranked sixth in Canada. Nice. Good for you. Congratulations. So you're a role model. I'm getting there, I hope. <laughs> Who here thinks she's a role model to others? <laughs> All right, we're going to the phone lines here. Now we have Kathleen Wong phoning in from Gander. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, how are you? Oh, wonderful. Do you have a question for Katerina Roxon? Yes, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Katerina. Thank uh, you. Her, her gold medal. Uh, I have two questions, I guess. Uh, first of all, I'd like to know why you started swimming, uh, swimming and what age were you? And my next question is, well, is this your last games, or do you think you'll compete again in, London, in Tokyo? All excellent questions. <laughs> and those, those are my questions, so I'll hang up now and listen to her on the radio, okay? <laughs> um, thank you for that. Um, I started swimming when I was five. Actually, my parents put my sister and myself into lessons just to learn how to swim because we, we did live on an island. You know, if you fall in the water, it'd be pretty nice to save yourself. Um, so th I think that's, it was a great life skill to learn, um, something to always have. Um, that's the only reason we pretty much started swimming. And then um, when our lessons were going on, when I was about seven, I think, um, we saw the swim team um, coming back from like competitions or they were training, doing some practices and um, saw how close-knit group they were and um, my sister and I decided, oh, okay, that would be really cool to go be on a team, do something fun together with some other kids and that's, that's how we started swimming and uh, actually my first competition ever was in Gander so that's, uh, that was a very special meet to me because that's where it all started pretty much. Um, the second question, um, is this my last games? Um, for sure, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. Um, for sure, I'm taking at least a month off. I need a complete water break and a complete mental break from anything swimming and just to enjoy, enjoy the moment, enjoy being me and just having some fun. Um, definitely going to get back in the water, though. I'm not sure. I'm just going to take year by year and see how I'm doing. For sure, I'm going to try and go to World Championships next year, which are in Mexico. I think that would be pretty cool. I've never been to Mexico before, so that would be pretty interesting. Um, I'm just going to take it year by year, and hopefully, uh, if I'm still swimming, I'll be in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks she should keep swimming? <laughs> All right, Katerina, I'm back in the audience here, and I've got another person to talk to. Hello. Hi there. My name is Margaret Thibault. Most people just know me as Muggs. And on behalf of the uh, Parasport community in Newfoundland and Labrador, congratulations. Thank you, you Muggs. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you. I've known Katerina through a number of initiatives with the Canadian Paralympic Committee, and she's been so awesome and such an inspiration. She's an amazing coach to some of our younger swimmers on the West Coast. And uh, if I can take off my Parasport hat, I'm going to put on my day hat at the Jane Wage Women's Rehabilitation Center. And as a recreation specialist, 
we and going back even before then, the rehab has played a role in trying to create opportunities for youth with disabilities to get out and get involved and get active. We work with schools, we work with the provincial sport organizations, for example, with Karina, who has been an amazing support with Swimming NL, and creating opportunities. We have provincial games that are inclusive. Our young people who have physical or visual challenges and intellectual impairments compete in our provincial summer and winter games in various sports. And some of them are going on to other activities like the Canada Games. And with our network with working with Easter Seals, with the medical community, with the schools, with the PSOs, it's a great network. And if anybody is out there thinking they'd like to try it, I have one young girl saw some of the Para Pan Am athletic coverage last year and she thought, I wonder, can I do that? Well, she's doing it. She's throwing shot put, training with the Canada Games prep squad. Never know, she might make it to uh, uh, Winnipeg 2017 along with some of our other young people. So, so she watched the games where Katarina Roxon won six yes. medals. Yes, yes. And now she's training hard in her own sport. With athletics, yes. And we've got any number of them. We, there's coaching opportunities. We are trying to get the word out there to youth with disabilities through all our channels and also working with the PSOs to create the, um, the, the resources, the, the coaches and, and the equipment, all that sort of thing comes with the package. So it's out there if you think you'd like to try it. And so do you have a question for Katerina? Uh, no, I think Katerina just knows I'm so proud of her <laughs> and uh, also proud of Robin and Liam who came out of the Children's Rehab Center into their various sports. And also, I guess, a shout out to um, some of the other mission staff. There's one other person that was at the Paralympics in Rio, Ian Parsons, as medical support to the wheelchair basketball and to, uh, uh, to the Athletes Village. And there's opportunities for coaches, for people to get out there and be involved. I'm not bragging, but I've been to five Paralympics and one Olympic Games as mission staff. So there are opportunities for people to get out there, get involved, and help young people like Katarina to do what they want to do. Great speaking to you, and uh, since you don't have a question for Katerina, I now have an assignment for you, okay? okay? It's just fair, you didn't have a question, so we got a little chore for you. Okay. She needs poutine. Okay, <laughs> um, I, I'm on it, I'm flying to the West Coast myself. Uh, uh, we'll see what we can do, Katerina. Maybe I'll bring you some Sunday, or Monday. <laughs> oh my gosh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to speak to another person here. Uh, I think, are you up for talking to me? <laughs> Feeling a little shy? It's just radio, it's fun. Hi, who are you? Um, my name is Jill and I'm a student from Academy Canada. I'm studying therapeutic recreation. Well, thanks so much for stopping by today. So, do you have a question for Katerina Roxon? Um, it's probably already been asked because I only just got here, I apologize. Um, but I was just wondering, like, if, if someone's looking for inspiration in their life, do you have anything that you would recommend for them to like, reach their end goals? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> These are hard questions, guys. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, I always say this, and I've always said this growing up. Um, dream big and dare to be bold, for sure. Um, no one really, if you make, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, making small steps in life, it doesn't get you very far. But making the big steps and being bold in anything you do, you're going to succeed. Um, and I'm, I'm saying for anything, it doesn't have to be sport, it can be work, it can be school, it can be anything in life for sure. Um, definitely being able to um, not anything, let anything stop you from doing it or let anyone tell you you can't do it for sure. Um, just, just dream big for sure and uh, be proud of who you are. Now, surely you did dream big, but did you ever imagine that there would be a Roxon way? <laughs> And the premier of the province announcing Roxon Way. Um, that was very exciting. I was not expecting that at all. It's uh, something I'm looking forward to seeing as I'm driving down the road now. Um, and to have it on the West Coast is just incredible. I think uh, for sure this is a huge, huge thing, not just for my family, but for everyone who's been involved in, in my journey. Um, this is... This may say rocks and way, but there's a lot of people in involved in this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well answered. <laughs> All right, I, did you have a quick question? Uh, sure. 
Um, you are? Michelle Mayo. I'm also in uh, the ther therapeutic recreation course at Academy Canada. And I guess my question is, you know, we all have these days where it's just not going our way, it's not going as planned, and, you know, we all look for ways to kind of re-energize ourselves or try to get ourselves sort of back on the right track. And I know with training and, and doing all that, that you must have a lot of um, situations where that might come up. So, um, like, what kind of things would you do to sort of boost yourself back up on those difficult days or those days that, you know, just are hard to... It's, um, some days it's like, it's pretty hard. And I'm like, I don't feel, and it's a good thing my dad's my coach because he gives me a lot of leniency here. But um, I'll tell him, dad, I'm really not feeling it today. I don't feel like putting in the effort today. And it's, it's some days are like that. And um, some days he'll say, okay, yeah, you know what? Maybe you need a little break right now. We'll do something really easy or, um, just skip today's practice, come back tomorrow, re-energize, ready to go. And sometimes you need that. You need that little bit of a break to get re-energized and be prepared to go faster the next day. Um, sometimes it's me, this, especially this year, I've had a few of those days. Because we were counting down the days till Rio, um, we, we were getting excited, we were getting nervous. But some days it's like, oh no, I don't, I don't feel like it. You, ju you just have those days. But then, getting up, I said, okay, you know what? Um, the girl, th the girls from Britain or the girls from Ireland, they're up already. They're already on the go. They're already moving. They're already in the water. They've done a practice. They've done their training. Okay, you can't miss a day now. Okay, time to get up. So it's it's a lot of self motivation and kind of looking at not just yourself, but looking at other people in the world who are in your classification, in my case, and seeing, okay, you know what? They're ahead of you right now. You need to get back on the boat and keep going. I have one more person who wants to ask a question. I hope it's a quick one. He really wants to ask this question, but we are very tight on time. Yeah, I'll be as quickly you as I are. can. You are? I'm Mark Bradbury. I'm the CEO of Freezer Seals. And uh, welcome and congratulations to Katrina. And Thank welcome you so Easter much. Seals. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you. And Ramona, thanks for coming to Easter Seals and hosting your show here. Thank you to everyone at Easter Seals. Oh, you're most welcome. I just want to quickly add um, a little piece of information and add to what um, Eileen uh, has already said, our programs director, and that's that we offer well over 20 programs and services. And I guess there's many parents out there with uh, children with disabilities and wondering, you know, how can I get my child started in a, in a uh, athletic program and, 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 and so on? And that's to please just visit our website, eastersealsnl.ca and they can see a whole a complete host of uh, programs and services that we offer and uh, for them to check us out. All right, thank you so much for that. And again, thanks to everyone at Easter Seals for making this possible. Thanks to all the people who came, really a big crowd, fantastic questions, really great to meet you. We appreciate it more than you will ever know. And a huge thank you to Katerina Roxon for making herself available to our audience, our Paralympic gold medalist congratulations congratulations to you wonderful to have you with us thank you for having me that's it for crosstalk for today i'm ramona deering see you back tomorrow